back and now it is our time for our weekly episode of the process and tonight we focus on the art of pottery how does clay end up being something beautiful and useful jackie wambiru takes us through this take a look Despite the development of kitchenware, cookware using modern technology, the art of pottery is still gaining popularity. This week on the process, we focus on the art of pottery. So this is malleable clay that we've brought all the way from Kitengela to here. First things first, malleable clay, meaning foldable, is acquired. So we take the clay through a process, we sieve it, get some very nice lip which doesn't have any impurities like sand or any roots and then we dry it on our ceramic beds and get very malleable clay. So we cut clay using a wire cutter. To mold a piece, the clay is cut into the required size and then transferred to the potter's wheel. To remove off all the air bubbles. While at the wheel, it is wedged to remove all the air bubbles. After that, it is then put on the potter's wheel through a process called throwing. Where it is then dampened to reduce friction before centering of the clay commences. Centering of the clay requires the clay to be pulled up and down. I'll center the clay by even adding water just to reduce friction. We pull up the walls, open the piece, pull up the walls, and then we get the desired shape that we want. And by doing this, the clay is centered. Lines are then drawn on the clay to establish that the clay is centered and opened up by putting a hole at the center. So all the lines were well centered. So right now I'm opening the piece, so I put pressure using one of my fingers. I do a hole at the center and then I pull out the clay. It is then removed from the potter's wheel using a clean wire cutter and allowed to dry. So the bottom is not very heavy, so I'll just trim it. Trimming then takes place so as to acquire the desired shape and weight. Trim the pieces so that we can get the desired shape as well as the desired weight. We don't want very heavy pieces or a little bit of faulty pieces, either on the rims or even on the final piece. The pieces then undergo a drying process by letting them sit out. So we take the pieces through drying, and which is a very natural way of drying. So depending with the size of the piece, the smaller they are, they take a long, uh, shorter time. The bigger they are, they take a longer time. So we leave them out and at times we have to slow down the process of drying by covering them up with polythene. But that is for the very big pieces when you don't want them to develop cracks. So I'm going to arrange these pieces in our kiln. After letting them sit out, the pieces are traversed to the electric kiln where they're fired up. After placing the pieces in the electric kiln, the pieces undergo a process known as water smoking. I'll leave the kiln open just slightly at the top and also the plugs will be open just to allow any moisture to come out and that is called water smoking. After 12 hours, the fired up pieces are removed from the kiln. After the pieces are hardened by heat, they're now referred to as ceramic or bisque. The bisque then undergoes glazing which involves the use of metal oxides to paint, deep or spray the pieces. After glazing, the pieces are then returned to the electric kiln 
and heat up so as to achieve the final product. Very safe metal oxides. So we either dip, we spray or we paint the pieces and then we get our glazed pieces like this. This is a glazed piece which we are going now to return back to the kiln. Fire it for like 12 hours at a higher temperature of 1100 degrees Celsius and now get the final products. The final products are now ready for market. Jackie Wambiru, The Process.